Don't be mad at Caitlin Clark. She's getting 28 million. Don't they want sisters to get paid? Or they, they don't want a white girl to get paid first. I think that's what it is. Definitely what it is. What if I told you that one endorsement deal could flip the sports world on its head? Caitlin Clark's groundbreaking Adidas contract is far more than just about shoes. It's pulling back the curtain on deep-seated issues from racial dynamics to gender inequalities. This deal isn't just a game changer. It's rewriting the entire playbook of sports marketing challenging everything we thought we knew about how athletes are promoted and valued. Since she has signed this contract, you guys, and her WNBA season has come and gone. And with that, Nike has not done one thing to promote her. We have not seen any commercials. We have not seen any ads. We have not seen any Caitlin Clark merchandise. And we for sure as hell have not seen any Caitlin Clark signature shoes. What if I told you? I want Asia Wilson to have a shoe and every black young lady to have a shoe but she's marketable. And I'm not saying you young ladies aren't. You said Asia who? Asia Wilson. Asia Wilson. So from the Aces? Yes. That's what everybody's mad oh about because goodness. she doesn't yeah, have yeah, a sneaker. Yeah, that does make sense. Right. So I'm not saying she's not marketable, but people are up in a frenzy and nobody was paying attention when I was talking about this during the NCAA tournament, not the sneaker part. Now you might be wondering, what's the big deal? Let me break it down for you. Nike signed both Asia Wilson and Caitlin Clark two of the biggest names in women's basketball, but neither had their own signature shoe at first. Then, Nike made the move to create a signature shoe for Aja Wilson, while Caitlin Clark was told to wait. This decision sent shockwaves through the sports world, raising questions about how brands prioritize their athletes and the message it sends. Conversations with people in the know, it indeed has something to do with the WNBA MVP and Nike athlete, Asia Wilson. And after that silence from Nike, meanwhile, we've got Caitlin Clark, the rookie sensation, signing this huge deal with Adidas. But the timing raises questions on the other side, Aja Wilson, a multiple MVP winner, is about to start producing her own signature shoe. But this time it's Nike that wants to take the lead. When you deal with corporate America, it is no feelings involved. It is yeah. purely business. And a lot of people get emotional over race, over how good you are, over if this person's a better basketball player, football player, rapper, singer, whatever. It is all about business for corporations in corporate America. And it's all about, can you sell their product? But here's where it gets really interesting. This isn't just about two players. It's about race, gender, and the future of sports marketing. We're talking about a deal that's shaking up the entire industry. And you know what? We're about to uncover why this is so much more than just business as usual. Get ready, because this story is about to change everything you thought you knew about sports endorsements. It's Nike, Under Armour, Adidas, Reebok, whoever said, because she sell our shoe. Could we sell our shoe? Because when you sit there and say, uh, Caitlin Clark got 28 million, first of all, that equals $3.5 million a year if you do the division. Yeah. All right, let's zoom out for a second. This isn't just Caitlyn versus Aja anymore. We're watching a clash of titans. Nike and Adidas are going head to head, and the stakes have never been higher. Are you ready to see how this shakes out? Because this is about to get real interesting. He reports Nike wants to prioritize Asia Wilson, and it fears the optics of giving a rookie a signature shoe before an already established star who just won league MVP for the third time. Nike's been playing it safe sticking to their tried and true strategy of backing established stars like Aja Wilson. But here's the kicker. While they're focused on the big names, they might have just missed out on the next big thing. Caitlin Clark's been making waves and Nike, well, they've been caught napping. Nike struck absolute gold when they signed Caitlin Clark to an eight year, $28 million endorsement deal. So why in the world are they ignoring her? You see Nike signed Clark, but what did they do with her nothing, no ads, no merchandise, nada? It's like they forgot. They had a rising star on their hands, and you know what happens when you snooze in the sports world you lose. So when she turned pro, several shoe companies were after her. Under Armour said she'd be the face of Curry brand. Adidas and Nike. Enter Adidas. They saw what Nike couldn't or wouldn't. They swooped in and offered Caitlin Clark a deal that's got everyone talking. This isn't just a contract, it's a statement. Adidas is saying, we believe in women's sports and we're backing that belief. 
talk about regular season viewership, not draft viewership. Regular season viewership, it grew by 20% in 2023. It's grown by 180% now, which means it would take another five or six years to do what Caitlin Clark has done. But here's where it gets really interesting. Clark isn't just a good player, she's a game changer. Since she hit the scene, WNBA viewership has skyrocketed by 400%. Her games are pulling in over a million viewers on average. Can you believe that? One player, transforming the entire landscape of women's basketball. Doesn't make any sense at all. And playing the politics where, oh, we need to release Asia's shoe first. Well, no, it's not Caitlin's fault that you haven't done anything for Asia yet. And maybe think about why haven't you released something for Asia yet? Is it because you're not sure how it will sell? And if that's the truth, like that's just business. Why are we coddling these women you wouldn't see this on the men's side if a brand thinks they're gonna sell shoes with a player they're gonna release some stuff they're not gonna be like oh well so and so has been playing in the league a little bit longer so i'm gonna make sure i get theirs out first then we'll push caitlin's two seasons they're saying now that we might not get a signature shoe from caitlin until 2026 or 2027. so why did nike let her slip through their fingers Maybe it's internal politics, or maybe they're so focused on their current stars that they can't see the next big thing right in front of them. Or maybe, just maybe, they're stuck in the past while Adidas is looking to the future. Caitlin Clark just landed a major endorsement deal with Adidas, and this partnership is a game changer. It's a huge win for Clark and for women's basketball. See, Adidas isn't just selling shoes here. They're selling a vision of what women's sports can be. They're betting big on Clark, but they're also betting on a whole new era of sports marketing. Adidas is saying, hey, we see the potential in women's sports and we're going all in. And Nike, they're left playing catch up. They've got Aja Wilson, a multiple MVP winner, still waiting for her signature shoe, while Adidas is out here changing the game, making moves that are shaking up the entire industry. Where people can love a player, love everything that they're about, and want to buy their shoes. Wilson capitalized on Caitlin Clark and they put out signature Caitlin Clark balls and other merch that literally sold out within minutes of them going live. The hype that Caitlin Clark had going into this season we will not see that again. She came off of playing in a national championship game that had over 20 million people tuned into that game, then going straight into the draft, and then going straight into the WNBA and breaking an insane amount of records. What does this mean for the future of sports marketing? Are we seeing a changing of the guard? Is Adidas about to leave Nike in the dust when it comes to women's sports? No, you're white, you have to stand in line. We're committed to Asia Wilson. Asia Wilson's not going to sell a shoe. The plot thickens. While everyone's focused on the dollar signs, a controversial question is bubbling up. Is race playing a role in this endorsement drama? And if so, how might that reshape the entire sports marketing landscape? You might think this is just about sneakers and contracts, but there's a whole lot more going on beneath the surface. We're talking about a situation that's exposing some deeper rooted issues in the world of sports marketing. Issues that go beyond just two athletes and could redefine how brands approach endorsements moving forward. I, I wonder how many comments they read from black fans saying something like, don't let the white media promote that white bitch into taking over our game. Let's tackle the elephant in the room head on. Some people are saying the backlash against Caitlin Clark's success isn't just about her skills on the court. They're pointing to the fact that she's a white athlete in a sport that's predominantly black. Now, that's a touchy subject, but it's one we can't ignore if we want to understand what's really going on here. This isn't just about athletic talent. It's about perceptions, biases, and the intersection of race and sports in a way that could redefine the narrative around women's basketball and endorsements. It's crucial to peel back these layers if we're going to grasp the full picture. Hey, Asia will be offended. This is Don Staley and the rest of the angry Yas Queen feminists saying, don't do that for that white girl until you make this six foot five black woman more popular than the white girl. That When you look around and ask yourself, why is the WNBA marketing the playoffs leading with Asia Wilson and not it? Kelsey Mitchell, <laughs> not Caitlin Clark, why? Why are they? No, you're white. You have to stand in line. 
We're committed to Asia Wilson. But it's not just about race. This whole situation is shining a spotlight on gender in sports marketing to Clark's deal with Adidas isn't just changing the game for her, it's reshaping expectations for women's sports endorsements across the board. We're seeing a shift in how companies value women athletes and their potential marketability. How impressive has Asia been this season? I think she's the greatest player in the game. I think she's one of the greatest players of all time and we just need to stand down and recognize and pay homage. 24.0 points per game. 12.1 rebounds per game, and now 1,000 points in a single season. Aja Wilson's stats are off the charts. But let's be real, numbers only tell part of the story. Now, let's take a moment to talk about Aja Wilson. She's a multiple MVP winner, and you'd think she'd be at the top of the endorsement food chain. But here's the kicker. She recently said, it's crazy because I literally can't get a signature shoe. Can you believe that? A player of her caliber still waiting for that recognition? It really makes you question the criteria these companies are using to make their decisions. Is it about performance or are other factors at play? This situation shines a light on the discrepancies in how brands value talent. And it's a conversation we need to have. Into the biggest star in sports. It ain't happening. They're lying to themselves. They're delusional. This entire controversy is pushing us to take a hard look at representation and recognition in sports marketing who gets the big endorsement deals, and who gets left behind, and why. These are questions that brands can no longer ignore. It's about more than just athletes. It's about the narratives we create and the values we uphold in the sports industry. As we dissect this situation, it becomes clear that the decisions made by these brands have significant implications for the future of sports marketing and the athletes striving to make their mark. The conversation around equity and representation is not just timely, it's essential. Leftists are idiots. Idiots. They're not about business. They're not about growing the WNBA. They're about diversity, equity, and inclusion. This is insanity, what they're doing to Caitlin Clark. It's bad business. It's short-sighted. When this woman exits the playoffs, probably tonight, the WNBA playoffs are over. But here's where it gets really intriguing. This situation isn't just shining a light on existing problems. It's driving the demand for change. Companies are now being compelled to confront their biases and reevaluate how they promote diverse athletes. We're on the brink of a significant shift in the entire landscape of sports marketing. This isn't merely about endorsement deals anymore. It's about creating an inclusive environment that reflects the true diversity of the sports community. Brands are starting to recognize that embracing this change is not only the right thing to do, but also a smart business move that can resonate with a broader audience. Iowa Hawkeyes basketball star and top WNBA draft pick Caitlin Clark is coming to Indiana. She'll suit up to play for the Fever in Indianapolis. It's news that may have some people wanting to buy her jersey. And for some jerseys, prices are topping hundreds of dollars. Think about it. If Adidas can recognize the potential in Caitlin Clark, what other opportunities are slipping through the cracks due to traditional marketing strategies? This could mark the dawn of a whole new era in sports endorsements, where companies begin to look beyond the usual suspects and start investing in a more diverse range of athletes. We're talking about a paradigm shift that could redefine who gets the spotlight in sports marketing. Brands that embrace this change might find themselves not just ahead of the competition, but also part of a movement that values inclusivity and representation. The possibilities are endless, and we're just getting started. If I were to get some gear in here, I'm sure it would sell real quick, uh, but I just I haven't had access to any Indiana Fever gear. Just announced last night, the point guard who has played for Iowa is heading to play for the Indiana Fever. It's a draft pick that's motivating shoppers to show off their Caitlin Clark pride. One, another one's over 375 today. You heard that correctly. A Caitlin sold. Clark Fever jersey sold for $375 online. In Ashen Bremer's experience, nonetheless, fans have come to him for Iowa Hawkeyes merchandise. The Caitlin Clark effect continues. The popularity surrounding the superstar is now extending to the WNBA. Yes, yeah, fans are on the hunt for anything and everything <laughs> Clark. Now that she's officially a member of the Indiana Fever, that's something KCCI's Kayla James learned in West Des Moines today as two local shops prepare for the expected rush. Fans are looking for anything Clark and Indiana Fever related. 
in my year time of being here, this is the first thing we've sold really besides like Hawkeye. We sold out of like her, you break it, you own it shirt in like just a few days time. You Break It, You Own It and Clark number 22 have been popular for shops like the Black and Gold Shop and right here in Rally House. And they expect anything Clark laid in Indiana Fever to be just as big. Now, you might be asking yourself why Adidas is making such a bold move by investing heavily in Caitlin Clark. Well, brace yourself for some jaw-dropping stats. Have you heard about the Caitlin Clark effect? It's not just another buzzword. It's a phenomenon that's revolutionizing the landscape of women's basketball. Her impact isn't just measured in points scored or assists made. It's resonating across viewership, engagement, and interest in the sport. From skyrocketing ratings to increased merchandise sales, Caitlin Clark is proving that she's not just a player, she's a transformative force. 35 points for the Fever in that win. She also added another eight assists to her collection yesterday, which earlier in the weekend, Caitlin Clark set the single season assist record in the WNBA, the most prolific passer in WNBA history. She is now the all-time rookie leader in points, assists, and three-pointers. There is exceeding expectations, and then there is whatever Caitlin Clark continues to do in her rookie season in the WNBA. She has taken every bar set for her and gone over it, and that is ridiculously impressive. Let's dive into Caitlin Clark's rookie season because it wasn't just impressive. It was downright dominant. She didn't just lead all rookies. She absolutely crushed it in every category points, field goals made, assists, steals, and even minutes played. We're talking about a performance that's not just good. It's historic. And here's the kicker. She finished fourth in MVP voting as a rookie. Can you believe that? It's a testament to her talent and impact on the game, setting the stage for what could be an incredible career ahead. Well-deserved. She averaged 21.9 points, 10.5 assists per game. In that span, she recorded at least a dozen assists nine times. That span also included the WNBA record 19 assists on July 17th against the Dallas Wings. But wait, there's more Clark didn't just break records. She shattered them. She scored the most points ever in a rookie season and dished out the most assists in any season period and triple doubles. She pulled off multiple of those, something no rookie had ever done before. And in case you guys were curious what Caitlin Clark did last Sunday against the NFL, 1.84 million viewers nearly twice as many people said all right let me turn off football and let me go check out caitlin clark let me turn off this eagles game and let me check out caitlin clark let me turn off this giants game turn off whatever game you are watching you guys said okay i've watched enough time for me to watch caitlin clark indiana fever make their playoff debut now you might be wondering Okay, she's good on the court, but what's the big deal? Well, here's where it gets really interesting. Caitlin Clark isn't just changing the game. She's transforming the entire business of women's basketball. Her influence goes beyond just stats and highlights. She's redefining what it means to be a female athlete in this sport. With her rising popularity, she's bringing in new fans, attracting sponsorships, and opening doors that have long been closed. This isn't just about her performance. It's about the ripple effect she's creating across the industry, paving the way for future generations of female athletes. Remember, Caitlin Clark was drafted first, which means last year they were the worst team in the WNBA. It did not matter because this season they were the most watched team in the league. An average of viewership, 1.1 million viewers each game in the regular season. Other games, listen to this, paled in comparison, drawing just about 394,000 viewers on average per game. So 1.19 million versus 394,000 for the rest of the WNBA teams. Have you noticed more buzz around the WNBA lately? There's a compelling reason for that. It's called the Caitlin Clark effect. Since she entered the league, viewership has skyrocketed with a staggering 400% increase. Her games are averaging over a million viewers, showcasing how one player can revolutionize an entire league's popularity. This isn't merely about basketball. Clark's impact is compelling us to reevaluate how we perceive and value female athletes. Adidas recognized this incredible potential and seized the moment. They're not just selling sneakers. They're investing in the future of women's sports and signaling a monumental shift in the industry. Had the 
craziest momentum that we have ever seen with any athlete in the history of ever. And the fact that Nike did not capitalize on that, the fact that they are the biggest athletic sportswear brand in the world, and we didn't hear a peep out of them the entire season, it truly makes me wonder, like if I were Caitlin Clark's management, and again, I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but I would be truly rethinking the deal that I signed up for. How do you miss an opportunity like that? How do you not capitalize? And Nike, well, they're probably kicking themselves. Right now, they had Clark signed, but they didn't do anything with her. No ads, no merchandise, nothing. It's like they couldn't see the gold mine right in front of them. That's when in women's sports, the way I see it, we're not going anywhere. Little girls are going to play sports forever. They're going to grow up to become women who are going to continue to play sports. These teams aren't going anywhere. These leagues aren't going anywhere. It's not some startup that we hope works. It's not leaving. And it's such a wonderful investment opportunity, whether it's individuals or corporations, to look like a genius. Get in now. I promise you in 10 years, you're going to look like a genius. But here's the real kicker. Caitlin Clark's success isn't just transforming her career. It's paving the way for all women in sports. We're witnessing a significant shift in how brands perceive female athletes. They're finally recognizing that women's sports aren't just a niche market. They're a colossal opportunity waiting to be tapped. This newfound awareness is leading to increased investments and sponsorships, creating a ripple effect that could empower the next generation of female athletes. Clark is not only changing the game for herself, she's redefining the landscape for women in sports as a whole. See investment in other women. You know, if you looked at how most of that taxpayer investment is, is typically spent, I would think it'd be definitely something that we don't think about with regards to gender. Think about it if one player can cause this much. 1814. Change what could happen if more brands start investing in women's sports. We could be looking at a whole new era of sports marketing is that Clark will take all of her current national sponsorships with her to the WNBA, which includes State Farm, Gatorade, Nike, Xfinity, H&R Block, and Panini America, just to name a few. She can also earn more money in the WNBA offseason through league sponsorships, up to $250,000 on a player marketing agreement through the league itself. There's also a $500,000 bonus split between the two commissioners, cup teams, as well as a $500,000 playoff pool. All right, let's break this down. We've witnessed the intense clash between Nike and Adidas, the racial and gender dynamics at play, and how Caitlin Clark is changing the game. But this conversation goes beyond one deal or one player. It's about the future of sports marketing and how we choose to represent athletes. This moment is a critical inflection point, challenging brands to reassess their strategies and recognize the diverse talent pool available. It's time to embrace a more inclusive approach one that celebrates all athletes and acknowledges their contributions to the sports world. The landscape is evolving, and it's essential that we adapt along with it. And the many athletes that are coming into the WNBA are showing that these endorsement deals will follow great players and great ambassadors. Adidas isn't just selling shoes here. They're redefining how we value women's sports. They're making a bold statement. We see the potential, and we're all in. This commitment isn't just about Caitlin Clark. It's a broader movement that's demanding attention and respect for female athletes across the board. And you know what? This is forcing everyone else, Nike, brands, and sponsors alike, to step up their game. The message is clear. Women's sports are a serious investment, and those who fail to recognize that risk being left behind in a rapidly evolving landscape. The WNBA has an undeniable place in the history of sports glory and activism. However, the best women's professional basketball league in the world still fights for the attention, popularity, and respect they deserve. Now, some of the resistance is twofold. The majority of those women are black, putting the league at the crossroads of combating both sexism and racism. So here's the big question. How can we, as fans, champion a more inclusive and equitable approach to sports marketing? The game is shifting right before our eyes. It's no longer just about who lands the big endorsement deals. It's about fostering a sports world that reflects and represents all of us. Diverse athletes, diverse stories, and diverse experiences. The ball's in our court now, and it's up to us to demand change. Whether it's supporting brands that prioritize inclusivity or celebrating the achievements of all athletes, our voices matter. So, what are we going to do with this opportunity? Let's make it count. If you've made it this far and are enjoying the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on all notifications.
We know watching this video takes some of your time, and we truly appreciate you sticking with us. Your support helps us bring you more great content. 